spare me a dime I'm a little short change Though the wise and fine Times are getting better Things are going my way But I can use a cup of Jive Jack to start my day Things are looking up This was a requested review by Liam Higgins, and hopefully this uh, this is the review you wanted. Today we're looking at Under the Rainbow from 1981. I think this is the second movie from the 80s I've ever looked at. I think uh, Killer Clowns from Outer Space was like 1989, so yeah, second, second movie from the 80s we've done on blockbusters. Okay, the overall premise, if you want the gist of it, it's... Uh, Short people being cast in The Wizard of Oz, and a bunch of short people running around a hotel having a party. That's basically it. There's more to it than that, That's, but I saw the movie, that's pretty much what the movie was. I mean, for God's sake, you could even put the IMDb description on a napkin, it's that short. Like, this, this movie's kind of style is like a screwball comedy, kind of like a Mel Brooks or Zucker Brothers airplane kind of kind of feel I was getting from like the beginning anyway. Okay, so if you want a more in-depth description, it takes place during the 30s, so you've got a Nazi dwarf played by the late great Billy Barty, and uh, and uh, you've got Mako. Mako is in this movie. That really pissed me off because I love Avatar Last Airbender, and the fact that Mako's in this movie sucks, but he's a Japanese spy, and uh, and they have a map that is to like military stuff in America and yeah they're the bad guys obviously then uh, you also got Chevy Chase who was supposed to be like the bodyguard of a duke and duchess for people doing like cheesy fake not even remotely funny fake European accents Mary Fisher is the love interest she's the casting director of The Wizard of Oz and remember that it takes place in 1930 because most of the jokes if the, I mean, okay, 95% of the movie is basically, ha, huh, short people. The rest is just kind of, ha, huh, women, ha, huh, black people, ha, huh, Japanese people. And, like, okay, look, before somebody says something like, Oh, it's just the PC police. Oh, it's the overly sensitive liberals that are trying to censor everything. People just don't like it because, oh, it's just a little bit offensive. Oh, that's, that's exactly the reason people think it's offensive. If you're a regular to this channel, you know that we're not really the PC police. We have a lot of, uh, you know, kind of edgy humor on the channel. The thing is, my stipulation is, if you're gonna do offensive humor, you gotta make sure it's funny, and you gotta make sure there's an actual point to it. I mean, you know, movies like Blazing Saddles, and uh, the, even The Producers, which is the movies that this movie was reminding me a lot of, the reason that those movies work is because, while the humor might be racist or sexist, Hey, boys! Look what I got here. Hey, where are the white women at? Work, 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 work. Hello, boys. Have a good night's rest. I missed you. It actually has a purpose to it. They actually have a point to it, and that's what gives it the oomph. That's what makes the joke funny, is that the joke has to have a purpose. That's how the satire in a spoof movie works. And, you know, we already talked about that with the Summer of Spoof and all the bad parody movies where they're just blindlessly referencing stuff. Really, this movie feels like the 80s equivalent of, like, an edgelord, like, 12-year-old who just comments a bunch of, like, racially insensitive things in comments just because, ooh, I'm edgy! Edgy as hell, dude! It's not funny on principle just because you're saying something offensive. You have to be funny because if you really think that just saying something offensive and crude makes a joke, you have the lowest sense of humor in the world. You're, you're basically MC Swigga. <laughs> really is just nothing but ha huh, short people they're short they that's basically it it's it's I guess it's the absurdity but it's it's not funny whatsoever and the jokes that aren't at that are lame too like okay I know it takes place in the 30s and there are a bunch of cartoons and stuff like that where they did this but you have uh, a Japanese movie producer who gets killed and uh, he gets confused by Billy Barty the Nazi dwarf into thinking that he is the Japanese spy, even though Mako clearly is, but he can't tell. 
uh, and Carrie Fisher was meeting with him earlier, but the whole point of his character is, you know, aside from getting killed off and showing that there's, you know, murderers in the hotel and that there's evil afoot, uh, his entire joke is that he just talks like an Asian stereotype. He replaces R's with L's and, you know, oh, Ching Chong, he, ta he talks like that. Oh, hello, Carrie Fisher. I'm Mr. Ching Chong. I basically racist talking Asian character for movie. It's so funny I mispronounce R as error. It's just really funny. This R shows something you see as racist stereotype in Bad Micro Bay movie. It's like Rob Schneider from I Now Pronounce You Chuck and Larry. It's like, yes, in certain cases, that can be funny. But uh, in this case, you're not doing anything with it. It's very lazy, stupid, and nothing clever about it. One thing really quick, I just want to say, Chevy Chase, you know, as much as we love him in movies like the, the Good Vacation movies, uh, the, uh, like, I'm not surprised he was in this. He, you know, Chevy Chase isn't in, in a lot of bad movies. Uh, a movie that this reminded me of that also had Chevy Chase was Nothing But Trouble. But, okay, Chevy Chase being in this, understandable. He was in a lot of bad movies. Carrie Fisher. What dump truck of money did they go to her and say, hey, do you want to be in a movie where it's it's basically about the, the dwarves from, from Wizard of Oz? You want to be in that? I highly doubt she looked at the script and went, huh, that's good. Okay, but it's, 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 I'm lost for words. I gotta say, most of the short people actors in this movie, they're, they were in a lot of stuff too. Billy Barty's obviously been in a lot of stuff. They got the guy who actually puppeteered the E.T. puppet from E.T in this movie. And the joke with him is that he's always womanizing. That's that's all it is. He goes around and at one point near the end he gets locked in a locker room full of women and then they scream and then he creepily walks straight to the camera and it's it's creepy. There's no joke around it. <laughs> Duke and the Duchess, like I said, they have really crappy European cartoonish accents. They they're not funny whatsoever. They have a joke where there's a a hitman who I guess was supposed to be an Italian stereotype. Every time he's on screen, they have the Italian the da -da 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 -da. <laughs> Papa Bia, pizza, spaghetti. But the joke of the assassin is that. He gets very close, and then at the very end, uh, him and Mako kind of have like a standoff, and uh, they end up killing each other. That, that was basically it. Oh, and the joke is that um, the Duke and Duchess have a dog named Strudel that keeps dying, but the, the Duchess doesn't know, and Chevy Chase has to keep replacing the dogs. Let's hope Pete is not watching this movie. Whole gag about how the manager, of the original manager of the hotel before it gets taken over, went to a convention with some hot chick. I, that was dumb. That's another thing, the Duchess, there's a joke that just confused me to hell from the beginning. Uh, it's when they first check into the same hotel with the, all the short people, and she looks at the short people and goes, huh, what a bunch of lovely children. So she thinks that the little people are children. Okay, I, all right. Like, I get, I get the joke, is that she's a crazy old woman and she thinks that all these, all these short people are children. Not really funny though. That's not a funny joke. It doesn't help that most of the little people in this movie, all they do is party. Like, until the very end when they chase the dwarf Nazi, there really is no, there's really nothing that, aside from like maybe the main dwarf guy, I don't, like really, all they do is party the whole movie. And then there's a joke about like one of the staff hands who's a big fat guy named Tiny, uh, a bunch of uh, little women, go into an elevator with him and they say, come to our party, there's gonna be booze and women. And he's like, okay. And then later they show that he's tied down. So. <sighs> See, just like, just reimagining these jokes is painful. Okay, so let's just talk about how the movie ends. The movie ends with them chasing the Nazi dwarf, Billy Barty, uh, through the movie sets and all this different stuff. There, because apparently he has the map. This is after Mako and the assassin are killed. So, uh, he's just running around the movie set and all the little people finally get their act together and start chasing him throughout the movie sets. There's a bunch of, you know, a uh, bunch of movie props flying, there's a bunch of people, you know, getting knocked off of uh, tall platforms and all that kind of stuff, and it's just a wild, wild chase. And then, they end up on the Wizard of Oz set, and you think they destroy it, and then it turns out that'd be like the Wizard of Oz. It's supposed to be that, oh, you know, it was, it was all a dream, and, oh, look, you were there, and you were there, and you were there. They don't actually say that, but, you know, you got a Chevy Chase playing a different guy, you know, playing someone who, I guess, he was, like, close with uh, on his hometown in Kansas. 
uh, you know, and Carrie Fisher's there, the stagehands are there, uh, and then a guy comes out. Apparently that guy's recruiting actors to actually be in Wizard of Oz, so this is now happening for real, it's no longer a dream, and he's like, I'm gonna be in a movie, and then you see Billy Barty, but he's not a Nazi, he's actually uh, a movie talent agent, and he says, you know, work with me, kid, you're gonna be in the big pictures, and... The, then they all the, then they sing a song and they drive off into the sunset and you know everything's happy because now he's finally going to be in Wizard of Oz for real and you know he, you know he's not going to have to deal with any of the stuff that we dealt with in this god awful hour and a half movie. What I'm trying to say is this movie's dumb. There's really like I I couldn't even think of a part where I laughed. It's just it's if it's not being offensive for just for the sake of being offensive, it's just boring. Like. I was just sitting there like, is this, we're only 30 minutes in, oh god, we're, oh, we're almost, we're halfway through, damn it. Like that's, that was the overall feeling of watching this, it was, there was no, like, I don't want to say, yeah, there was no enjoyment, there really was no enjoyment in watching this movie. I mean, I can't say, I guess the people who made it, they probably had fun for all I know, which explained a lot because, you know, a lot of people were just partying on set from what the, from what I was seeing. I wouldn't really, I wouldn't recommend this at all. This is, like I said earlier, this is in the ballpark of other bad screwball comedies from the 80s that have zany premises but really nothing of substance and maybe if this was a short maybe it could work like as a joke gag short that oh all the people, all the little people that worked on Wizard of Oz haha <laughs> as a full movie though it doesn't work at all. It's very boring uh, the humor is very lazy and you know, not even clever at all. And really, if you want to see a movie from around that time that was clever, watch Airplane or watch watch any of Mel Brooks' movies from the 80s. Don't please please don't watch this. And I feel bad for all the people that were involved. It's it's not a good movie. Nah. So, thank you for the request, Liam. Hope you enjoyed this review. And uh, look forward to the next Blockbuster episode that comes out in October. And we're probably going to do some more Blockbuster episodes. We're no longer going to just keep it to one video a month. Probably going to start doing some more stuff. Maybe more skits. Maybe more reviews. Maybe try out some other things like editorials. Uh, we'll see what happens in the future. So until then, I'm Adam Sykes. This is the Blockbuster Show, and we'll see you guys next time. Somewhere over the rainbow, way up. In a la la